Hello YouTube, and welcome to a video tutorial on how to create a Minecraft server on a Raspberry Pi, Generation 2. And Generation 1 works for both. So, we're using SSH to get into the Raspberry Pi as do not have any capture cards capable of recording the HDMI or uh, coaxial output of the Raspberry Pi. Thus, I'm using SSH to, do that to, uh, to use my computer to show you this. So, I'll just log into the Pi user on my Raspberry Pi. Uh, right there it says my Raspberry Pi's IP address, which is 192.168.1.112. And right here is my address of this computer. Um, yes. So let's get started by creating a new directory from the home directory. With the mkdir command, I'm going to call this ser server2. And there we have a server running. We'll use the ls command. Which is essentially like the dir like the dir, uh, like the dir command in MS DOS. You can see this is all the stuff we have in here. I already created created a test server in here, and we have two directories: one called server, one called server two. So let's go to the server two directory. Now we're in the server two directory. As you can see, there is nothing in the directory. So let's change that. This is a command that I'm going to put into the, into the description. It is uh, sudo wget the uh, web address to get the spigot, uh, well, spigot jar file, which is essentially like bucket. It is essentially a bucket just designed for the ARM chip that the Raspberry Pi uses. Just for the fun of it, I'm going to show you the stats of the Raspberry Pi whilst doing this. You can have multiple SSH clients running at the same time, which is quite handy. And I mistyped my password again. So this is a handy command to know. It is called top, which is essentially the task manager. Sort of. It, it just displays the system usage. Right here is the CPU usage and then memory usage and so on and so forth. Uh, note. The Raspberry Pi does use it does uses it does does use its RAM to uh, as a RAM disk, meaning it caches stuff being written to the SD card onto the RAM so it's accessed faster. So, back to the creation. Now you can see we have spigot. So what we're going to do going to do now is run spigot using this command, essentially similar to uh, what is used with um, the normal Minecraft server except for this part which you can forget because I because according to the internet uh, Java is now you uh, installed in Raspberry I'm not showing you how to install Raspberry but yeah essentially what this does it runs the server and I'm going to skip this part because as you can see the CPU is running at 94% and its RAM is also being used quite badly. So it's now creating other server files for us. It's gonna take a while. It's gonna take this first start is gonna take about five minutes. So um, see you guys in about five minutes. Welcome back. The server has finished loading. As you can see, it took pretty much 300 seconds, technically 301 seconds. You can see down there the time has changed as well. It, it, <laughs> this is all the list of the stuff that came up there was the command we entered. As you can see the CPU is now running at 74%. Uh, it's going to go down a bit, but yeah. And to prove to you guys that this is actually running, I shall start Minecraft. I hope this was the correct version. Probably not going to be the correct version. Oh, hey, it is the... Nope. I was actually looking for the other version. Um, there it is. If you're wondering why I have a Minecraft crack on, the, on my desktop, well, you're not supposed to care about that kind of stuff. Are you joking? Are you joking, Minecraft? Seriously. Thank you. There we go. The server is currently version 164. Not sure if it has been updated yet. Actually, 
Let's find out. Yes, it's still 1.6.4 as of the making of this video. The server can run plugins from the bucket forum, by the way. Anything to know? So, well, most of this is starting. This is the IP of my server that I'm running on the Raspberry Pi right now. And let's join. This is going to lag a little bit. Just as a warning to you guys, the server can usually handle up to about three people simultaneously after a bit of lagging, but that works rather well. But for like 50 bucks for a uh, for Raspberry Pi, it's pretty darn good. Ah, there we go. And of course, my is running a bit slow with a mouse cursor. Oh, look, we spawned right next to a village. How wonderful. So yeah, as you can see, villagers are supposed to work. There's a glowing torch right there, which you cannot pick up because the server is still lagging a little. But it'll go, go away shortly. Just by removing a block and seeing how long it takes for it to spawn. Also, another thing to do is type in the disk command, which it's probably not going to execute. That's going to execute it there, apparently. So let's see how long this takes. Oh, hey, there's a cave right there. So as you can see, it's theoretically running Minecraft. I can show you the server that I'm normally running on the, on the Raspberry Pi. Not showing the external IP, though, because that would be bad. But on request, I might actually send the IP. Still lagging a little. So yeah, basically the microserver is running. Let's see what, what's in the chest. Yeah, lagging too. Let's rejoin this. Hmm. That's an interesting glitch. Ah, yes. Almost 100% to use on the CPU. So essentially what is slowing down the server is things like the nether and the end, as well as NPCs, chickens, all kinds of stuff. So let's get on to fixing this, shall we? So we're going to type in stop, which shuts down the server. As you should expect, if you're trying to run a Mac server on a Raspberry Pi on Linux, you should already know this kind of thing. If not, welcome to the server side of things. Uh, the water's nice here. So, um, yes. Ah, there you go. And, as it, yes, I'm still in the server directory. We're going to, go to, we're going to type ls. You can see all the new server files. Now we're just going to type in sudo pico and uh, see here server.properties. And we have the server properties file. So you can edit all of this uh, to your heart's content. I'm gonna keep the road name there. I'm gonna type this I'm gonna make another false. Then just keep the standard port. So IP should be empty too. Spawn NPCs. I'm gonna keep that to true. Spawn animals. False. Then on a mode, you could keep that a true or false. It's up to you. There, player total, let's go to four. And of course my numpad isn't active. Forgot that you can't use your numpad and putty. <laughs> I usually tend to create, to make monsters false as well. Let's change the Minecraft server to um, the Raspberry Pi test server. Okay, the way you're going to save this now is Control X, 
then type Y, and then press Enter, and you have saved this. Now, if we run our server again, first of all, thing to note, if you run it like this, if you close the window, server is gone. There is a way around this. You type in not this sudo ap k or apt I think it was I think it was apk oh well get dash no not dash star screen and apparently that was incorrect Okay, well, if this is essentially the app installer command, um, they have to type in. And what this is going to do is apt dash get. It is correct. Oh, there we go. There's a problem. There. It's now downloading screen, which is a very, very handy program to have. What this allows it to do is uh, type in this huge thing of a command which is going to create a virtual screen on your Raspberry Pi. What this allows you to do is shut off the session on the SSH client and keep the server running but not on most not ways the host computer's on. Well the computer is SSHing to or from rather. Which what this also allows you to do is um access the server console again anytime and easily turn off the access for instance if I want to disconnect the screen or go away from the screen back to the console I would either use control C which would cancel everything or I could use control A and then control D which detaches the screen now what I can do is type in screen dash R for reload and there's the console again how wonderful so we go back here, go refresh. Let's see, it says Raspberry Pi test server, zero out of four players, bad kind of connectivity, but what can you do? And now just wait until it's connected. What you can also do is set up a static IP and then port forward, make it, allowing other people to access the server from the outside. That's what I've done but I will not show you how to do that as it is different for every router and I don't feel like showing you how to create a static IP for the Raspberry Pi. It's easy to find on Google though and I will link a uh, site where you can get it from, but it's not going to be part of this video. Now you can see it's lagging a bit, it's perfectly normal. Now the world is spawning around us. See there's still world holes. But it's 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 spawning. There's a world hole again. So yes, we're warning this is gonna be a bit slow as the Raspberry Pi is a five watt computer essentially. But at least it works and you still can't trade with with villagers as it's still loading. But as you can see, placing of torches works. Breaking of blocks does as well. So, thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comment section below. And if you don't believe me that this is actually running on a micro on a uh, Raspberry Pi, you can record a video showing you guys this running on a Raspberry Pi. But it will take a while as I need to get the money for a capture card to do that. So if you don't want to believe me, then well, it's, it's your thing. Also, I will have a site linked down below where I got the information to create this video from. It's made by a very nice gentleman that is also running a Raspberry Pi Minecraft server. It also has the IP listed. So you can join that and see how it runs. And I'm seeing random parkour on the rooftops now. Texture pack is Fax Pure BD Craft, uh, 256 pixels, if you're interested. And um, yeah. My name is Lucas, and thanks for watching. Welcome back. I commend you if you managed to uh, view this video up to this point. 
This is a project I've been working on for this past few months. It is called the Tal, well, das Tal des Nebels, which is German and, and essentially means the Valley of Fog. It is an Asian style mushroom mountain ish type range created with uh, Voxel Sniper, World Edit, and a few other plugins and mods. And this is running on the Raspberry Pi server. The one, the original one, not the one I created in the video, but it is made up, created the same way, except it has a few more plugins and stuff running, and takes about ten seconds longer to to load. So this is just a little preview of what might come soon, rather later than soon, because I have a lot of schoolwork to do. Uh, of well, for Minecraft. As you can see, the map is despawning partially. So yeah, this would be a lot nicer to view on my actual supercomputer, but, oh well, Raspberry Pi is going to do fine. There are several temples, mushroom mountains, and so on in this map. Also a few puzzles. And, yeah, essentially it was built by me and a few of my friends. Also some of the friends that worked on the uh, Dehanshu video, which is the ballad from Fete Shilla. And right here is a, a huge golden arrowhead that was created to, commend, to commemorate the people who worked here. And we have the names of the guys who worked here and the exact start of the construction, which was uh, 2013, third second. So third is a month, second is a day. And we started at 5 p.m. Now you can see who worked here. Of course, me, Terrain, a friend of mine called Stefan, worked on Terrain as well. Jonas was, did some buildings, Thomas did some terrain, as well as buildings now. And the uh, build end has not been assigned yet, as we are still working on this. So yes, if you'd like to see more uh, of this map, please subscribe, uh, or just <laughs> check my channel every like month or so. And you will get updates on this, possibly. So, thanks for watching, and have fun with your mind, with your bucket server on your Raspberry Pi. Goodbye.